All right, folks, it's time for the panel. Woohoo! Love the panel. Uh, joining us right now once again is Rick Unger, uh, columnist for Forbes magazine. And uh, joining us uh, this hour is Ron Christie, Republican uh, strategist. Hello, Ron. Hello, Steve. How are you, gentlemen? Fine, hey, Rick. Goodness. Ron, what is with you today? I was watching you on television about an hour and a half ago. You were being <laughs> so reasonable. He said that you what were. What has gotten into you? He said you were extremely reasonable on CNN today. Is that true, Ron? <laughs> well, you know, th these things do happen. I, Dude, I you're scaring gave me. the administration credit for you the uh, $1 billion in, in loan guarantees to Ukraine. So stranger things have been known to happen to you. All right, let, let's, let's talk a little bit. We just had Caroline Glick on, and uh, she uh, and I talked about what's going on, what went on with uh, Netanyahu and Obama yesterday, um, and uh, what uh, Netanyahu said today at APAC, basically, you know, hey, I'm ready for peace, but the Palestinians, they, they, they have to accept a Jewish state. And she says they will never accept a Jewish state. Uh, I uh, agree with that. But what do you think of Obama giving this interview to Jeffrey Gold, Goldberg of, uh, of Bloomberg and, and basically repeating, uh, Ron, what, uh, what Kerry had said, saying that, uh, you know, hey, if Israel doesn't uh, make peace, I can't guarantee what the, the international community won't boycott them, won't isolate them. You know, threat, threat, threat. Well, I'm really getting tired of this president and this administration picking a fight with our strongest friend, our strongest ally in the, in the region, Israel. I am strongly pro-Israel. I'm tired of the fact that the Palestinians uh, and, and the Obama administration want the Israelis to concede everything and are willing to give nothing. And then the president uh, then goes around and tries to browbeat Israel. I'm tired of it. It's more of his reckless, his, his un, uh, really knowledgeable foreign policy. And I'm glad that, that Netanyahu yesterday, as well as today, held the line and said, I'm not going to deal with the Obama pressure. Forget it. And, and by the way, of course, uh, Rick, uh, in responding, uh, we, we need, I should point out always that Ron uh, Christie uh, was a special assistant to uh, President Bush, um, of course, and uh, also a columnist for the Daily Beast. So go ahead. See, go ahead, see more importantly, that's the Ron Christie we know and love. <laughs> well, he's, right. he's absolutely correct. Is he, wait, is he not correct? Is he not Look, correct? Well, I don't know. See, here's what we don't know. We don't know what's been actually going on in these conversations that have been taking place recently. Uh, there may have been a reason that the president took that position. We don't know if it's the Israelis stonewalling or if it is. Wait, as, as Ron, wait, wait, let me finish the yeah. thought. As Ron points out, if it's not the same old thing. Um, you know, my sense from the things that I've been told, and, and I know that's a, a difficult thing to say, but sometimes you can't repeat where you're told them, is that Netanyahu may actually be more in favor of some of the things that are happening in those negotiations than he's letting on and doesn't necessarily feel he can sell them at this point. Yeah, but, but isn't, it, I mean, isn't it true, Ron, that uh, uh, you know, a boss who, who Obama praised to the hilt in that column, uh, in, that, in that interview with Bloomberg, um, you know, is is he's he's just laid a wreath the other day at the the uh, grave of a t of a terrorist who killed Israelis. They treat them as heroes. He's not changed. He's never changed. Well, no, he's never changed. And I, as as one who travels on a congressional delegation trip to Israel uh, in late 1998, early 1999, and having been to Mahmoud Abbas's compound. It is staggering to me of the opulence and the wealth that he walks around with. And then you walk around in the West Bank and you see the staggering poverty, the high unemployment, the low, really, prospect for um, upward mobility. And you recognize that we're dealing with someone who is morally bankrupt, who's corrupt, who is taking our tax dollars and wasting it and spending it on himself and his cronies. And, oh, by the way, is cozy with terrorists. So I, I think our policy needs to change as it relates to dealing with peace with Israel and the Palestinians, and it's about time the Palestinians put some proverbial skin in the game and show how they are going to stop uh, terrorism, how they're going to stop trying to bully Israel, and recognize the existence of the Jewish state as a legitimate and peaceful state. And, and Rick, uh, the, the, uh, another thing Obama said in that interview yesterday uh, was, uh, you know, he talked about how uh, terrible it is uh, that uh, Israel is building settlements. You know, he doesn't talk about the rockets falling on Israel from uh, Hamas and from the Gaza Strip or terrorism within Israel or nothing, or honoring terrorists or, or teaching their kids to take, or honoring terrorists or, or teaching their kids to take Jerusalem with their blood through Mickey Mouse uh, shows. Jerusalem, in, in Israeli, on Israeli territory that may one day go back to, the, or go to the Palestinians. They never had it. Um, 
And that's his main problem. I mean, come well, on. What, well, let, let's put this in, in two parts, because I actually agree with everything I heard Ron say. I really do. You're right, Ron. Abbas has a huge fortune, and, and we know that the leadership before him did the same thing. There's no question that there is that kind of corruption on that side of the fence. I don't disagree for a minute. The problem is it's very easy to sit here and criticize when you don't really know what's going on in the conversations. You don't know if we're at a point where Obama may feel, I need to, to appear to be favoring one side of the discussion to move them closer to the table. We don't really know. We will know eventually. So I think, you know, when, when any president, any president, I don't care what party they're from, is trying to work through a problem that I, quite frankly, don't believe can be worked through, I don't think there is a solution in the Middle East, I, I'm afraid to say. But when they're trying to, I think it's best not to be so judgmental as it's happening. Judge them after it happens. Ron, I mean, this, is, this has been going on for five years. Well, it's been going on this for a lot longer than No, 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 the, the, the blasting of Israel by an you know, unprecedented fashion by this administration. True, and, and you know, again, it shows that uh, Rick and I can be from either side of the political spectrum, but see the world in, in, in much the same way, and I agree with his comments. But I tell you, the bellicose uh, treatment by Netanyahu from President Obama, I think, has been rude. Leaving the Israeli prime minister to cool his jets in the Roosevelt Room while Obama went home to have dinner and essentially say, come my way and, you know, come around to my way of thinking or, you know, get out of here, I think shows a lack of respect to the prime minister. It shows a lack of respect to Israel. And I think I look at the folks in the millions who are Jewish who have voted for President Obama and his subsequent reelection and think, how can you support a man whose actions seem to indicate that he does not believe in the strength and the integrity of the Jewish state. I, I well, I, as, as, somebody who meets that, as somebody who meets that definition, who is Jewish and voted twice for Obama, I don't really see it that way. I don't believe that Obama does think that about Israel. I've listened very carefully over the years. Yes, I know there have been times when he's felt the need to try and, and get some balance into this discussion, but I don't see him as an enemy in Israel in any way, shape, or form. And I have to tell you, I have a great many Israeli fans. Some of them see it exactly the way you do, Ron. I will tell you that. But I know many who don't see it that way, who view Obama as somebody who's trying to play his role in bringing this to an end so Israeli children and Palestinian children can grow up without fearing war all Well, the time. Then, it would, then it would be nice if he would talk about the incitement, which is what Netanyahu mentioned at the White House. The incitement yep. continues of the children, teaching them from the time they could read that they're going to take Jerusalem with their blood and Jews are pigs. Now, if it was the other way around, it would be, you know, they'd be withholding aid to the Israelis, and rightfully so. But, you know, to me, it goes back... Uh, Rick and, and Ron, it goes back to, um, you know, the Rashid Khalidi video that the L.A. Times would never release uh, during the 2008 ca uh, campaign when they were making, allegedly making jokes about Israel and the Jews, and uh, that's why the L.A. Times wouldn't release it because it would be detrimental. You hang around with Rashid Khalidi, and you're no friend of, of Israel or the Jews. That's absolutely right, and it, and it shows a, a really willingness of what I call the palace guard, our friends in the media, to either suppress, ignore, or never report on stories that could be uh, detrimental to this administration. And Rick, the only thing I'd say to you, my friend, that I think is adversarial, one of the many things that's been adversarial about the way that this president has treated Israel, when he was talking about it, the starting point for negotiations to be pre-1967 uh, war lines, right. that showed either an ignorance of the way that the Middle East is comprised or the ignorance of the fact who's been the aggressor towards Israel. Right. And, and neither or of them 20 seconds, Rick. We're or an attempt to, to hit a starting point, Ron, knowing that it would never end up that way. Remember, right. it's a negotiation. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, we will see uh, both of you back here in, uh, in an hour on the panel. Love the panel uh, here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Um, when we come back, we're going to turn our attention uh, once again to... Um, to what's going on in Russia. We um, uh, have John Fun with us, who wrote a, a great column about uh, Vladimir Putin and uh, the Russian government and the, the history of Russia and the whole thing. So he will be here to uh, talk about that with us. Um, all that straight ahead. Uh, you're not going to want to touch that dial, I guarantee it. It's all coming to you right here on the Steve Malzberg Show, of course, on Newsmax Television. The Steve Malzberg Show.